today we're going to take a look at some tips to take photos in, you guessed it, tiny spaces. Bye bye. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. Would you be my song and I'll be your sonnet? You be my chair and I'll surely be <laughs> Hello, if you're new to my channel, my name is Kika. And yes, today, first a little disclaimer before we get into the tips for this video. I do not live in a tiny place at the moment, but when I started out, I definitely lived in a much tinier apartment and I really had to figure out how to use the potential in that flat to get the photos that I wanted. Um, and now with this whole lockdown situation, I've been sort of forced to do my photos indoors, which has really made me think again about how to use whatever space you have to its max and so that you can still take photos while being home and indoors. Now, when it comes to taking photos indoors, the absolutely most important thing I would say is light. And I prefer natural light, so that means that whatever space you are working with, uh, try to find a spot that is close to the light, so close to a window, naturally. And usually also what I like to do is then whatever photo I'm gonna take, um, I like to place myself sort of sideways to the window so you get light from the, this side or that side if you're taking a portrait or uh, the one we're gonna do is gonna be on a table so then I'm also gonna put the table so that it's next to the window so I'll get those light from one side and then that will create some shadows and just also create the feeling of depth in a photo and especially when you don't have so much space you really want to do everything to kind of create that illusion of having more space and having depth in the photo is then one thing. So also when I'm going to shoot this, I'm going to do it in a way where I will show the table and then also show a little bit of the floor, again, to create that illusion of some depth and just make it a bit more interesting, the whole photo, hopefully. <laughs> All right, the next tip is to gather some nice looking materials and props. So this is really the one thing you want to do if you feel like you don't have a good space, then create that space. Um, also, if you're taking a photo in your room and there's a lot of clutter, then just remove that and style it a little bit. Little bit. Uh, so you have to put on kind of your interior designer glasses and take off like out any stuff that doesn't look so nice. So you really kind of create this space. Um, and what I like to do is for this one, we're going to use our uh, coffee table that is like this wooden and it has these cracks, so it's really nice texture. And also I'm gonna use these sheepskin because again, they just create more kind of texture and it just looks more rich and just kind of a little bit more fancy uh, than just having sort of very plain and like two-dimensional that just doesn't look so interesting I think um, so yeah and you know you can use blankets and you can use if you have yeah like a coffee table or just even sheets that maybe are if you have like these kind of linen blends uh, so all these kind of things just trying to think like textures and what you could add in the frame to make it look more interesting all right, next up, I'm gonna start sitting up here for my photo. So I have placed my table close to the window and so that I have the light from the side. For this photo, I'm going to be using Oreo cookies as my main thing. Then also I will need some coffee beans, some petals and flowers of varying sizes, and also some glitter star, star glitter. <laughs> When you're shooting in a tiny space, the angle that you take the photo from can really make it or break it. So when you don't have so much space around you, and one tip I do if I want to take a self-portrait, for example, and I want to have like a lot of my body in it or even the whole body, and you don't have so much space to put your camera, because usually you will need quite a lot of space to get like the whole of you <laughs> in the frame, um, is that you take it from really low. So a low angle, so you're placing your camera uh, so that it's just, yeah close to the ground, if you have a tripod or then you just like make a makeshift tripod with some books and stuff. That's one way where you can really get like a much larger uh, view. For this photo, I'm going to take the photo from up above. So that's also a really little trick and a sort of an unexpected angle for a photo. Um, so I'm going to build a top down crane and I have a video on that. So you can check that out here. I'm not gonna get too much into it, uh, but that's always like a fun angle. And if you have a really tiny room, just see if you can take your camera really low or put it maybe up above somewhere high up just to get the sort of biggest possible space available <laughs> now it's really important that you're mindful about your composition when you don't have so much space no matter what type of photo you're gonna take and really try to focus on what is the most important thing and think about how composition 
about how to do the composition in your photos so basically how the different elements are going to be in the frame uh, so one really good tip is to think of it sort of as shapes so if you don't think about what the actual things are for a moment but just how will the eye be drawn to different things usually when i set up for a photo of this type it takes me a long time just just figure out the composition and i'm gonna be honest this was a really tricky one because i had the sort of basic idea but then to get it right i knew i wanted to have my hands in there as well and also make sense of it i usually want to have a little bit of a story so what i'm doing in the photo with my hands uh, so it doesn't become too abstract um, even though you could argue what makes sense in any of this <laughs> but anyway that it makes has some kind of logic for myself so that i build that logic in the photo itself so yeah i think it requires quite a lot of patience and to have some time to figure this out and just try a bunch of things and experiment In the end, what it also really comes down to, I think, is that you find something small that you really get excited about and that inspires you um, so that your idea, you have at least a clear starting point and then you'll see where that takes you. And secondly, I think it's also always that balance game of trying to match your vision and idea and try to get it as close to reality as possible. And usually if those can meet somewhere in the middle, that's... Uh, already a winner i think um so even if you have an idea that is very grandiose and maybe you don't have at all the circumstances to do that thing uh trying to find ways where you can at least get a little bit of that and maybe take some elements also one thing uh of course photoshop is perfect for these kind of projects so i did this photo a while back and i don't have our wall is not this big so then i in photoshop used the tool called content aware fill just to make my wall larger so those kind of little tricks you could do also uh, to kind of get the illusion of having a big space but then also i think it is best to work with what you have instead of trying to just go against it because that will be very frustrating in the long run i think all right, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found these tips useful. Uh, let me know if you have any other kind of struggles you'd like me to make a video on. Uh, I'm always really, really grateful to hear your ideas and what you would like to see more of. Uh, so let me know in the comments below. And also thank you for all the really nice comments over here and on Instagram. Um, I can't reply to all of them, but I do read all of them and it means a lot. So thank you so much for that. And if you'd like to see more of my stuff, you can come and say hi. I am over at Instagram, Kutovakika. And also if you want to see more of my videos, then you can subscribe and like this one and you can hit the little bell for notifications. And yeah, I hope you have a nice afternoon, evening, morning, day, wherever in the world you are. And I will see you next week. Bye. Hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello.